Next, what modifications can our neighborhoods make to help seniors? It Takes a Village is not just for kids, it's for seniors too. Behind the wheel or public transportation, a few tips for getting around. And ballroom champions over 70. Support for Columbus Neighborhoods is provided by... At American Electric Power, we've been proud sponsors of WOSU Public Media for many years and strong supporters of our headquarters city here in Columbus, both downtown and in neighborhoods like yours. State Auto Insurance Companies, transforming to become a digital provider of auto, home, and business insurance and for nearly 100 years, committed to the people and neighborhoods of Central Ohio. State Auto. The Columbus Foundation. Smart philanthropy for a smart city. ColumbusFoundation.org. Bailey Cavalieri. Your relationship with your law firm doesn't need to be complicated. It just needs to be right. CODA. Keeps our community moving forward. Falgren Mortine Marketing and Communications. Think wider. Ohio Health focuses on you and your family with a mission to improve the health of our communities. Women in Philanthropy at Ohio State, changing lives by giving together. And by contributions from these and other Columbus area families who support WOSU. Thank you. We found that there are plenty of people talking about how to make our neighborhoods age-friendly. In fact, there's an initiative called Age-Friendly Columbus. It's a study of seniors to find out what works in our city and what we need to get better at. From simple things like walkability to big things like aging in place. And the surprising thing coming out of the data is that what works for seniors works for families too. We know, the statistics show, that our aging population is going to double in the next 35 years. So we can either plan now and do it smart, or find ourselves with, like some other cities and kind of behind the eight ball. And so that's what's been great about the whole initiative. We've been doing all of this with our seniors at the table, not just for them. Age Friendly Columbus and Franklin County are part of an international movement through the World Health Organization and AARP. But really what it is, is a five-year process that a city and county commit to. The first year is all about research, so getting out in the community, doing focus groups, doing surveys, learning what the challenges and successes are in each neighborhood. And then in the second year, you take all the information and you write your plan of improvement. So that outlines the last three years, which is where we are today. We're in our first year of implementing our strategic plan alongside our older adults in the community, our community leaders, making sure that we're taking what we learned in our neighborhoods and really enacting change in our community. And some of them are afraid. You know, they're living in a society, uh, we're living in a society where everything's changing every day. How do you enjoy walking if you don't have the right kind of, of walkways? How do you uh, enjoy a park? if you don't have enough benches. How can you go to a restaurant if you can't get the scooter in or the wheelchair in? And, and what about the restrooms? Are they accessible? We have to think about how people are accessing their primary care providers, how they are getting their groceries, how they're getting their food. And that the future vision is, you know, very focused on neighborhoods and, and how we help um, folks where they reside, where they choose to age in place, and how we're thoughtful about what those respective neighborhoods and needs are. The challenge has been that professionals and researchers have been siloed in their different areas of expertise. I know about built environment. I know about health and social service environment. I know about home modification. We need to really think about how do we come together and bring the person, people side with the physical built environment side. And that's what age-friendly uh, communities, this work is doing. Well, I just think just the, the very fact of not only listening, but hearing the concerns of, of the seniors. 
and that each of our each of our seniors have something to contribute, and that's what we're looking for. You know, we're all aging every single day, so I think that it is near and dear to all of us. I think most um, individuals I come across have either been, been a caregiver or recognize that as they age, they need to be more thoughtful about um, just the world around them. And so for those that are funding this, the city and the county, um, it seems like it is the right thing to do. I mean, a lot of the, what we hear is what's good for seniors also going to be good for that new parent in a stroller. I mean, if we have walkable sidewalks, if there are benches, it's really about our community coming together and making sure all of our neighborhoods are walkable, livable, that people are able to have access. The need for this type of work is so important because our older adult population is growing. We are poised to double our 65 plus population by 2030. And so what we want to make sure we're doing is preparing our cities for that age wave. And in our community, we believe that that is something that can be done by embracing older adults, coming at it from a proactive approach, being really attentive to the fact that we have a lot of issues going on, we have a lot of challenges, but we know that if we fully embrace this work, uh, we can have a true positive impact. Next, how a village can support older neighbors. Then, behind the wheel or public transportation, a few tips for getting around. And ballroom champions over 70. The saying goes that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, the village movement has grown up. It's a national grassroots initiative that is part social support for seniors and part help in times of need. The idea is that seniors will accept help from people they know and trust, and the movement is gaining momentum. We checked out Village in the Ville, just one village here in Columbus that is supporting seniors in a new, old way. Much about the social, the social aspect as it is the exercise, but we, we, we love to get the exercise too, and you know, walking is a great, great form of exercise. Really well, easier to be, the, be back doing it again. And the single digit beds too. Well, yeah, yeah. If you're a senior, the more active you are, the more friends you have, uh, the better you feel, the longer you live, the, the more you're able to stay in your own home uh, as long as possible, which is one of our main goals. Bring your hands back by your shoulders and turn your toes under. Well, I decided when I retired, I, it was my last chance to get in shape. So I started practicing a lot. Notice which leg is in front and switch. This is meant to reflect what people can do, not reflect what they can't do. So we have volunteers who are here with plots and we're all working together on planning what we're gonna plant here and growing together. We'll have some work days where we all work together on that. Uh, and then we'll be um, taking advantage of the fruits of our labor at the end of it. Yeah, I'm going for all vegetables. Some jalapenos. Yeah, I knew mm. you'd want those. You know, once we found out about the variety of programs and support services and social events they offered, we said, okay, this is a win-win situation for us. Village in the Ville is a mutual support network for adults 50 and over living in the Clintonville, Beechwald, and University District areas of Columbus, Ohio. It involves both uh, social activities as well as volunteer assistance. Both Liz and I had been 30 years ago in a babysitting co-op, and it seemed as if it was just a natural next step to take a babysitting co-op to a kind of a outer care. So it's kind of like the whole co-op idea. We're all giving and getting. And in fact, I think five people from that babysitting co-op are now active in the village. So it's come, come full circle. So members like Beth, we take Beth to doctor's appointments. Oh, so we're, we're what? Wilson Bridge Road? Is that the... That, that, that place yes. we've been before? Okay. I'll link a volunteer to pick her up and uh, typically wait at the appointment and then take her to get uh, pick up prescriptions on the way home and then, you know, go back to home or work. And uh, this, the transportation piece is so important. Yeah. 
The social component is really important because you can meet people where they are and that can grow so if somebody needs support they have a trusting relationship to ask for support. And they've been really important to me for medical appointments because not only do they drive me but somebody stays with me and cares about the answer of whatever is happening with that doctor which you wouldn't get with a taxi cab or another kind of service. It's nice not to have to depend on friends and family all the time. Uh, sometimes when you have a lot of needs, the village just fills in nicely. You know, you can call them and it, your, your, your family's working, your friends are working, they can come in the middle of the day. Um, it's just very, very convenient. We get to know the people that are the volunteers, which is really nice. Two of my closest friends are volunteers that drive uh, to take people to doctors, and sometimes they're the ones that pick me up. Um, we get to know each other. We get to know the volunteers. It's, it's nice to be able to, to have that exchange of helping other people, yet at the same time receiving the help from other folks. And like Mary said, you, 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 you not only have friends that are volunteers, but you also make friends and you find connections and interests with other people that you meet through Village in the Ville. Isolation can really shorten one's longevity and, and impact one's mental health and one's sense of wellness. And so the social component is very important and it's wonderful to get people together to do activities that interest them and engage them but the friendships that occur uh, over a game of cards or in a knitting circle or touring a garden, uh, these are what is at the heart of all this social activity. I think in about another month, we can start putting those seedlings that you've started into our plot. I've met a lot of wonderful people that live right here in my neighborhood, but that I had never uh, met before. Uh, and the social activities that we have are invaluable. It feels good to help out somebody who needs help and I'm hoping I'm paying it forward and when I get to the point that I need some help, there'll be some younger people who will help me. Those of us who are baby boomers want to stay at home as long as we can and a way that we do this is through support through something like Village of the Ville. Well, that's the whole purpose of the village, is to keep people in their homes, uh, to provide act activities for them to go to and attend so they won't be isolated, and then to have volunteers to come in and help with things that they, wouldn't, that they can't do for themselves. It's something that is filling a need, and it helps build a community. It helps you get to know your neighbor more, and. Um, you know, you, you cross paths with these people at other places, at the park, walking your dog, um, at the grocery store, and, and it just builds more strength in the fiber of the community. But you reach a point where you don't want to have to depend on asking for favors all the time. And uh, people are willing to help, but it's nice to be independent enough not to have to be always asking your family and your friends for help and have another resource. It is very much this model where everybody has something to give and everybody's going to have something they receive. So even the volunteers we find, uh, I mean, they get that pleasure of meeting a new person and making a new friend and helping someone in their community, which makes life better for all of us here. Next, behind the wheel or public transportation, a few tips for getting around. Then, ballroom champions over 70. One of the biggest fears for anyone is losing independence. Keeping a car and driving as long as you can is the goal. There are programs now that help seniors do just that by assessing their abilities and suggesting small changes in habits as they age. AAA, OSU, and special occupational therapists are trained to keep senior drivers on the road. We followed an assessment to show just how easy it is to jumpstart a new attitude. There is no question, older drivers are among the safest drivers we have on Ohio roads. You are far more likely to be injured by a young driver, say your son or your grandson, than you are your father or your grandfather. 
Um, the important thing to remember is that as we age, uh, it's not so much that we're causing more crashes, it's that when we're involved in a crash, we're more likely to be injured. The second thing we need to remember is that as we age, when we start to hit the age of about 70, that's when we start to see the rate of older adults being at fault start to rise. The most important part is to just be aware and to be self-assessing. You don't have to necessarily give up the keys. It, it, that is the last recommendation that we come to. We usually want to, to make some adjustments and, and some limitations. A lot of older people will automatically limit themselves. They'll uh, drive less at night or eventually they may stop driving at night at all. Um, they also do other things uh, like avoiding rush hour or planning their trip ahead. And so that's what makes older adults so safe and so great. As we age, we're more likely to get things like diabetes, heart condition, stroke, dementia. When we do get a medical condition like that, or if you're a caregiver, that's where you really need to engage a medical professional. I deal with somebody on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Ohio State also has a program similar to mine. We all assess folks on an individual basis, so we do a comprehensive assessment of the skills needed to safely operate a motor vehicle. There's three things we need to drive. We need our eyes to work well in that visual system. We need our brain to be able to process what we see and be able to pay attention. And then we need to be able to tell our bodies what to do. So those three things make up driving and how we drive. AARP and AAA both offer courses around the state of Ohio, um, usually scheduled, that they'll look at defensive driving education to older drivers who want some refreshment about how safely to operate a motor vehicle. Um, the AAA also has an approved course that the state has, has come up with. They do four hours of classroom and then they do time in the vehicle as well. So that provides an insurance discount oftentimes, so people are very inclined to do that. It's wonderful education. There's also options for some adaptations uh, physically too. So there's extra different kind of mirrors we can use. We can pad a steering wheel to make it a little bit easier for somebody with a lot of arthritis. We can look at a technique change um, to check their blind spots or even for pedal operation depending on what their problems might be. Some people will live their entire life and always drive safely and never have to uh, transition away from driving. It's a very big transition to have to stop to dr driving and we like to call it retirement. So you retire from a job, you retire from driving. The important thing is to know and to seek advice so that you know what to do to remain I'm safe. Very safe That's good. We also visited CODA to find out about their programs for seniors. CODA provides an array of opportunities for seniors here in Central Ohio. So the first opportunity is our reduced fare card for fixed route. And an individual would go downtown to 33 North High Street to our past sales office, show proof of age, 65 and over, and then would receive a card that would be used where they would just swipe it on the fixed route bus. If you are a little nervous about uh, riding the bus, the fixed route bus, that we do offer travel training. So a travel trainer, a trainer that will work with you on where you want to go and um, what you want to do in terms of public transportation on the fixed route bus and will take you and do that, physically take you and do that and ride with you. All of our buses have a number on them. An individual could also come to our mobility services building and receive eligibility on our Main Street service, which is a point-to-point -point service. And there's an application that they would fill out, set up an appointment to see an assessment administrator and receive an assessment. For CODA Mainstream, there is no age. So um, it is anybody that is a senior or maybe have a disability that could come and receive eligibility on Mainstream. To use CODA Mainstream, an individual would call our reservations line and schedule their trip one to seven days in advance of when they're looking to take the trip. You do get trained how to walk up and down the steps. The lift can come down. You can come up with your walker. You can come up with your wheelchair. I mean, it's a lots of opportunity to get out there now and have fun. And don't be stuck in the house. <laughs>
I didn't start dancing until I was 69 years old. Barbara's been with me for two years, and last year we went to uh, the World Championships for the senior division, and she won the World Championships in Smooth, American Smooth and American Rhythm. I like a lot of dramatic dances, like the tango, the paso. Um, I like those because it's a character kind of a dance. Ohio Star Ball is the largest competition literally in the world, and it's held in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we start at 7 o'clock in the morning and go until midnight the entire week. So on the, any given dance floor, you can have multiple levels, multiple age groups. That's what's confusing to most people, and they think that everybody on the floor is dancing against each other. When they're actually, they're just bracketed, and the judges have sheets that show what the brackets are and who's competing against each other. Each dance has its own storyline, its own character. The moment you're done with one dance, you immediately have to concentrate on the next one you're going to. As you're walking to your next location, you already have to be putting into a mindset of that storyline of that dance. Come on! I think it's a self-discipline thing. Mostly you're dancing against yourself. I'm very, very competitive against me. The number one thing judges look for is posture. A really good competitive dancer loves to work on technique. A technique is the one that's your quality control. So the better your technique is, the better your keeping motion, the better your understanding of how your feet move, then how your entire body moves. Oh, I love dress up. Just love dress up. I uh, didn't do it much as a kid, but I can do it now as an adult, and I love it. Dancing is 50% dancing and 50% fashion show. Uh, the gowns are fascinating, and uh, it's really hard to walk through the vendors and not try on some dresses. So when you go to a dance competition, the ball gowns and the Latin costumes, they're one-of-a-kind dresses, they're couture dresses. They range anywhere from $1,500 to five, $6,000. So Margaret's been dancing since 1985. She's worked her way through the bronze, the silver, and now she's into the gold level of dancing. And Margaret has won a top gold student there two to three years now. Once I started taking lessons, I really enjoyed it. I found it, it was a lot of fun and you're building up your strength and your endurance as you're dancing all along. So you're in better shape for your age than people who don't dance. It's challenging and I think you need a challenge no matter what age you are. And I think as you get older, you kind of lose that drive and dancing gives you that drive to challenge yourself, and I, I like that. So anybody at any level, any age can learn to dance. Uh, my youngest student right now is five years old. My oldest student I've ever taught was 94. But once you get into ballroom dancing, you are hooked for life. Get off the couch. Anybody can do it. And if you have no sense of time, your teacher will give you the sense of time. As I say, it's an addiction. <laughs> I'll warn you right now. <laughs> People who just have a love of life become really good competitive dancers because they be, they're just dancers and they have a good time. That's the most important part that shows across on the dance floor. And the Chai, thank you competitors. Nice round of applause for our couple fitness and Judges coming up now. Thanks for being with us. And remember, you can catch all of our episodes on ColumbusNeighborhoods.org. Plus, see our stories on the WSU mobile app. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you back here next week on Columbus Neighborhoods. So I could find out, and I found out.
for Columbus Neighborhoods is provided by. At American Electric Power, we've been proud sponsors of WOSU Public Media for many years and strong supporters of our headquarters city here in Columbus, both downtown and in neighborhoods like yours. State Auto Insurance Companies, transforming to become a digital provider of auto, home, and business insurance. And for nearly 100 years, committed to the people and neighborhoods of Central Ohio. State Auto. The Columbus Foundation, smart philanthropy for a smart city. ColumbusFoundation.org. Bailey Cavalieri, your relationship with your law firm doesn't need to be complicated, it just needs to be right. CODA keeps our community moving forward. Algren Mortine Marketing and Communications. Think wider. Ohio Health focuses on you and your family with a mission to improve the health of our communities. Women in Philanthropy at Ohio State. Changing lives by giving together. And by contributions from these and other Columbus area families who support WOSU. Thank you.